The World Cup in Qatar starts tomorrow. And so it's time for my predictions. We're going to go through each group, each of the knockout rounds, obviously the winner of the whole tournament, and then Golden Boot, Golden Glove, Player of the Tournament, stuff like that. I want to see your predictions down below in the comments. Without further ado, let's jump into it. And this is kicking off pretty much daily content on this channel throughout the World Cup. So I really hope that you're going to enjoy it all. So here we are, the FIFA World Cup 2022 predictor. And here are each of the groups. Our group A, we've got Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal and the Netherlands. Senegal had a massive injury blow losing out on Sadio Mane for this World Cup, who could have been an absolute game changer. Now, assuming that there's no corruption going on here, despite rumours on Twitter, Netherlands should comfortably win this group here. And so then we have to choose our runner-up and the rest. In theory, Qatar should come rock bottom and do absolutely terrible. But who knows what dodgy dealings are going on. I still think that despite Mane's injury that Senegal will come second and then Ecuador and then Qatar. So bottom to top, just flip that and reverse it and that is my table for Group A. Now Group B, obviously it's coming home. So England win the group. Don't even need to say anything else. We've got Iran, USA and Wales though. Iran had some decent results in their recent internationals and qualifiers and stuff like that. USA have a bit of faith this year. They've got some decent players and infiltrating the Premier League more and more, especially through Leeds right now. Jesse March's love for them. Wales obviously have Mr. Gareth Bale, who is one of the biggest names uh, that they can have in a tournament like this where he just shows up and does his thing. Came clutch in the MLS final recently. And so I think this is a really hard one to call second place. I think that that one-man star power of Gareth Bale is going to be enough for Wales to go through here. Next up, we have Group C, containing one of the favourites for the competition, Argentina. They're up against Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. Now, obviously, I'm going to put Argentina to win this group. I don't feel like I really need to justify that. You all know exactly why. Now, Saudi Arabia, no. They should be coming bottom here. Oh, I should also say I think Iran will come bottom of Group B. Mexico and Poland. Now, Poland obviously have Lewandowski. They have Szczesny. They have a couple of decent players. But I feel like every time when they're in these kind of competitions, I think that those couple of star players, uh, even people like Zielinski, etc., are going to do better than they actually do. And I feel like they let me down most times. So do I therefore go with Mexico to come as runner-up? Yes, I do. Poland third, Saudi Arabia fourth. In Group D, we have France, the current holders of the World Cup, up against Denmark, Tunisia, and Australia. Now, France, really, really easy, kind of boring, but obviously that's the choice here. And unfortunately, I feel like it's very, very boring for the second one of Denmark to come second. Australia and Tunisia, I really, really am not too sure who's going to come out worse here. I think that Tunisia will just edge out Australia, but it wouldn't surprise me if uh, they just end up on the same points and they score like one more goal or concede one or two less. Then we have Group E, which is a really intriguing group. Spain, Germany, Japan, and Costa Rica. Germany and Spain not been at their best in recent tournaments, but a new fresh young crop of players coming through for both nations, including people like Pedri, Gavi, Musiala. There's a lot of young talent. So I feel like these are going to be the top two in the group this year. With Costa Rica bottom, Japan third. I think Germany win this group. And I think that Spain come runners up, to be honest. I feel like the Germans just a little bit more organized. And I like their squad a bit more. Group F is a really a tricky one because we've got Belgium who don't seem to perform as well as they should in these tournaments despite always being really high in the world rankings. Croatia who have done very, very well uh, in recent years. Canada who they're having a bit more faith in themselves now. They've got a, a few players that are now sort of pushing through rather than it only being Alfonso Davies that anybody knew or had heard of before. Morocco have a few decent players, not an incredible crop, but I think that maybe this is the time. Maybe Belgium click and they top their group. I think Morocco come bottom. I think Canada just miss out 
to Croatia. Group G, the other big favourite. Brazil, top the group, simple as that. Serbia, Switzerland and Cameroon, however, that's a hard one to call. I personally think that this group is going to finish in the order that it states right there. I think Serbia are the runners-up of this group. They have some decent players. They just aren't the big household names that some people know of. But I really think that they have a decent chance here. People like Vlahovic, uh, Milinkovic, Savic, uh, Kostic, etc. should potentially do quite well together, especially being in the same league and everything like that. Just a little bit more chemistry than some of these other ones. But Swiss always have a good backline and goalkeeper. So they'll probably defend quite well. It's just going forward, I don't have as much faith in them. And Cameroon, just not quite as good. They need to bring Samuel Eto'o back. So we'll go Serbia. And then the last group. We have Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and Korea Republic. I'm going Uruguay to win this group over Portugal. Could be controversial, but I feel like they're also quite a few people's dark horses. I think with Son injured, Korea come bottom, Ghana come third, and then Portugal do come second. So those are the groups. Let me know your thoughts. Let's move on to the next round. So the round of 16, let's go. First up, we have the Netherlands versus Wales. Should be a pretty simple win for Holland. So we'll go with them. In match two, we have Argentina up against Denmark. And again, should be relatively simple for Argentina. Denmark are not bad, but Argentina, one of the favorites for a reason. They just have really turned things around in the last couple of years after everything was falling apart like five, six years ago. Uh, players were retiring internationally and everything like that. It was a mess. Nowadays, they look like a much, much more complete team. And winning the uh, uh, the Cup against Brazil uh, recently, the Copa America, was a big testament to that. So Argentina, easy win. It's coming home. France should swiftly set aside Mexico. Germany against Croatia is a really intriguing tie here. And I feel like our side of the draw here, um, Germany v Croatia is a really, really interesting one. It feels like these top matches are significantly easier to call than the bottom ones here. So Germany, Croatia, Brazil, Portugal, Belgium, Spain, Uruguay, Serbia, all tricky ties. I think what we're going to do here is we're going to say Germany go through. Croatia, yeah, they have good players, but they're still using a lot of the same ones from before that have just got a bit older, uh, a little bit slower and everything like that. So I think Germany, again, with their younger generation coming through now, should take that one. Brazil, Portugal. I mean, you got like Neymar up against Ronaldo and a load of other things like that. I think Brazil are just, their squad is so good. And with it being in Qatar, the South American nations and African nations and stuff like that. Nations where the, the heat especially is so much more intense. They're going to be better suited to this compared to like our pasty skin over here in England where we can't deal with 30 degrees. So I feel like that alone is going to be a big difference maker for them. It's still coming home though. Belgium up against Spain is really, really tricky for me. I mean, this one to me is a genuine coin flip as to who I think will go through. I think we'll go with Belgium. They have more Leicester players, so obviously that will carry them to victory right there. And then we have Uruguay, Serbia. Now, I think this one goes again to the South Americans of Uruguay because they just have a few more better players than Serbia uh, overall. So... I'm going to go with them, and we're going to move on to the quarterfinals. This is where things get ridiculously hard to predict. Netherlands-Argentina. I still think Argentina are going to have too much for the Netherlands here, so I'm going to go with them. Germany-Brazil. Could we get a repeat of that insane result in the previous tournament? Probably not, because I think Brazil are going to win this one. Belgium, Uruguay, again. I, th I think Belgium may just take this one. If they can actually click together like they've failed to do in previous tournaments, 
surely Belgium get this far. Now, us against France. It's coming home, but what if we got, like, injuries and stuff like that? What if we took it easy on France? Is there any way that Mbappe gets stopped by Harry Maguire? Uh, France this tournament have got injury problems. Pogba's out, Kante's out, which has made this magnificent midfield in the last few tournaments where they've just looked phenomenal. Pogba for France is just a beast, and so he's a massive loss, as is Kante. Nkunku has picked up an injury that's ruled him out as well. That's big. So they are a little bit crocked in that regard. They still obviously have very, very good players, but it's coming home. So let's go to the semi-final now. Argentina v Brazil. This is the big one, isn't it? This would be an unbelievable final. Unbelievable final. Who do I think wins? Because the winner of this wins the World Cup. That's how a, the vast majority of people doing their predictions sees this. These two meet in the semi-final, and then whoever wins it goes on to win. So we'll go over to this side first. I mean, if both teams play to their best potential, Belgium win. But again, they've not been that great in recent tournaments. Are we going to piggyback off of getting to the semi-final of the last World Cup, the final and losing on penalties of the Euros, to then make it to another final? I'm not sure that we are. I mean, it's coming home. Obviously, it's coming home. But we've got to think that we may get an injury to Harry Maguire. And so, therefore, what the hell happens there? Maybe Southgate... Uh, Southgate... Um, maybe it's too hot for him to wear a waistcoat. You've got to factor these things in when predicting how well England will do. Did we actually have enough right-backs in the squad due to Reese James's injury? Maybe not. Maybe six was not quite enough. So, I'm going Belgium and Brazil. I don't want to, but I am. And then Brazil win the World Cup. Third place playoff. Will either team care... Not sure. If they do, Argentina. And that is my World Cup tournament prediction. Now we have a couple of other things. Top goal scorer. There's a couple of interesting options. Messi is one. Depay is one because Netherlands don't have a hard group. Uh, and he's on penalties as well. Neymar is always going to be a shout here. Harry Kane. Because, again, penalties and a relatively easy group. Normally you need about six goals to get a golden boot at a World Cup. So you kind of have to think who might get that in the group stage. And genuinely, Harry Kane could do it. So because I'm not putting us to win the World Cup, let's throw that hat in the ring. Harry Kane gets another pointless golden boot in the World Cup. Most assists, I'm going to go for Messi. Player of the tournament, I'm going to go with Neymar. Golden glove, I'm going to go for Alisson. But none of that matters because in reality, it is coming home. It's a big dub for Southgate. Oh, it's going to be magical.